The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if they are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, there's a lot of things in this world that we just don't know. Some of them are big things, some of them are little things, but we all have them. For instance, many of us don't have the understanding of what it takes to split an atom. For some of us, you might not know about the function of the internal combustion engine. Others of us don't really know about how the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system work in sync to keep you alive from time to time. There's all kinds of things that really are left to people who are better tuned to understand them than us. That's kind of why we all have our specialties. But there are other things. Things that seem simple, but at the face of it, end up being not so simple. For instance, tell me what water tastes like. Because you see, there are things in the world that are difficult for us to be able to describe to other people, and that would be one of them. Others would be, how can you tell somebody what something smells like if you can't tell them it smells like something else? Do you ever try to describe where a yawn comes from? Or how to tell somebody to breathe? Not to say, oh, you should breathe, but tell them how they should breathe in terms of making that all happen. Or to describe exactly what's going on when somebody tickles you. You see, there's all kinds of these little things in life that go on on a regular basis, but we don't know how to define them. We don't know how to describe them so people understand. Try to describe a color without saying it looks like something. It's next to impossible. In today's second lesson, Paul's there throwing one of those things out to us that it really is impossible to describe. It's not original on his part because he borrows it from Jesus, this whole idea of love your neighbor. It's that concept of love. How do you describe that? We have an idea of what it feels like, but we don't know necessarily how well to describe it. The Greeks, the ancient Greeks tried very hard to do it. They had seven different words to be able to describe love. Four of them you can find in the Bible. And this one that Paul's talking about is known as agape. It's kind of a universal sort of love where you love everybody. But it still doesn't tell us exactly what that means. You know, I think part of the problem we have when we talk about love is we try to describe it as it is a noun. But to truly understand love, to truly embrace that concept and to be able to describe it to somebody else, it needs to be a verb. It is what we do that describes the love. It's in the sharing, it's in the caring, it's in the giving, it's in the offering of ourselves to other people. It is in the actions of our lives where love comes alive. And it is through that that people can understand exactly what love might be. You see, when we take the time 
to comfort somebody during a stressful period, there you can describe love. When you help somebody out in a financial situation when they find themselves pinched, there is how you see love. When you take the time to listen to somebody who you might not even agree with, but you listen to them without judging or contradicting them, there's a sense of love. When we take the time out of our day to drop everything that's going on because we have this sense that somebody is in need of our presence, well, that helps describe love. Because that is what love is is all about. It is that gift that we are given that we pass on to others and we pass it on through the act of giving. Whether it be our time, whether it be our thoughts, whether it be our money, all of those things together are acts of giving, acts of sharing. When we offer comfort to other people in any form, that becomes a description of love. And that description takes place in our very actions. Love is what we do for other people. Love is what we give to other people. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It doesn't depend on its own way. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. That's what Paul tells us in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. But the problem with that verse is we've co-opted it into something about marriage. And so most of the Christian world believes that this is a gift that a spouse gives to another. But the reality is that sense of love is what we give to the world. When we approach the world with that understanding of not being boastful or arrogant or rude, when we approach the world out of kindness and compassion, when we open our, our hearts and share that gift that God has given us, then we begin to describe love through the very actions of our lives. And I think loving neighbor really is all about that. And it's not picking and choosing. It is about taking that gift of love that God has blessed us with and sharing it with complete strangers sharing it with people that we don't agree with, and even sharing it with people that we truly don't like. Because in this time especially, I think it's ever so important that we share this gift of love. Because that's the only thing that's going to be able to change the world in which we live. God has blessed us with this gift and given it to us to be able to share with the world, to allow the world to understand what God has blessed us with through the gift of Jesus Christ. And it is through sharing that gift that the world truly can be changed. But it only happens if it starts with us. And if it's not us, then who? And if it's not now, than when. For love can truly change the world in which we live. And it can change the lives of people we encounter each and every day. There's no if, and, or but about it. It's quite clear. Paul simply repeated what Jesus said. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen.